Hallelujah. I think it was, uh, wasn't it Andre Crouch? He used to sing that song that uh, uh, started out, uh, How Can I Say Thanks for All the Things You've Done for Me? Anybody heard that song? Yeah. Any, you heard it? Was that Andre Crouch? Yeah. Yes, hallelujah. Glory to God. My, 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 especially like that verse. How can I say thanks? Well, you need to say thanks. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. You know, we'll never get caught up on that. We, we won't. If, if every second from now through eternity, you just said, thank you, God. Yes. You, you won't get caught up. <laughs> you won't get caught up. <clears throat> for one thing, because he's done so much, but for another, you know, over there in Ephesians chapter 1, it says throughout eternity, he's going to show you the riches of his grace. <laughs> throughout eternity. Hallelujah. There's more to see. There's more to partake of. Can you imagine? Hallelujah. There's more. Glory to God. Well, let's find our place here. You know, we're speaking about grace. And uh, in particular, uh, before we left last week, we talked about... Um, I don't know, I, I would call it uh, grace to get stuff done. But uh, I had it written here, so you probably have it in your notes, as ability by grace. Yes. And so we'll start um, with the scripture we left off with last week. Well, let's go ahead and start with Acts 14. Acts 14 and verse 26. And then we'll go to Romans 12 again. And uh, just see if there's anything else the Holy Spirit wants to bring out. You know, He's the teacher. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. The best any teacher can do is uh, just try to keep up. <laughs> yes. Glory to God. Just try to keep up. Acts 4, 26, it says, From there they sailed to Antioch, where they had been commended to the grace of God for the work for the work, say work. work, so there's a grace of God for the work, which they had completed. Then in Romans 12, we read this in verse 4, for as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function. So we being many are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. If you look around this room, you're a member of different people. So we being many are one body of Christ and individually members of one another, having been gifts different, different. According to the grace that is given to us, let us use him in prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. Our ministry, let us use it in our ministry. He who teaches in teaching, he who exhorts in exhortation, he who gives with liberality, he who leads with diligence, he who shows mercy with cheerfulness. And again, I want to mention this because sometimes people have taken uh, tests to find out, well, which one of these particular gifts are mine. And there's some of these here that are actually every Christian is supposed to operate in. Mm -hmm. But you can tell sometimes that every Christian is supposed to operate in uh, quite a few of the actually... Uh, in one way or another, all of them. In one way or another, all of them. I just got through teaching a 12-hour uh, course in nine hours to Rayma, Albania. And you might have seen the, the sh little short clip Sunday. But uh, um, it was, uh, uh, I'm not always great in titles. But the dust of it was how to teach. <laughs> and so I was teaching on how to teach. And uh, it had a lot of um, natural things attached to it. And uh, um, so my, uh, my, uh, um, my um, calling, you say, I guess, my uh, specialty is teaching on the Holy Spirit. And so usually when I teach overseas, they've saved that. You know, that's, you know, wherever I go, that's usually what I'm going to teach on is the Holy Spirit. And, uh, um, but, you know, it just, it, Albania is shut down. You know, you, you're still not getting in or out of Albania. And school must go on. 
And so they give me a list of three subjects, and uh, um, I couldn't decide, so I just picked the top one, which is basically how to teach. And uh, like I said, I had a lot of practical stuff. But I learned a lot in doing it, and it had some spiritual stuff, and then there's always extra the Holy Spirit will, will bring out of you, too, that you didn't even know was in there. And uh, uh, the Lord just speak up sometimes. Even. And, uh, but one of the things that I said is that, that in one way or fashion or another, you're all going to teach. You remember over in Hebrews, Paul said, by now you ought to be teachers. Yeah. And yet I'm having to rehearse the elementary principles. And you can go and, and review those, you know. And uh, um, Paul wanted to go on to other things. But he had to go back and do that. And he said, guys, you should be able to teach this by now. But where the confusion is is some people, when they hear teach, they think, well, I need to stand in front of a few people. Well, that's not so at all. You know, uh, uh, Luana is... Uh, a bus driving instructor and she's a teacher of uh, the rules and regulations uh, of how to uh, to drive a bus and there's a lot of government things that go with that well I don't know but I dare say she's probably very few times standing in front of a congregation teaching them how to drive a bus no but yet she's teaching about five okay about five at a time sometimes and then do you do quite a bit of one-on-one -on -one? yes one-on-one -on -one. well every believer should be a teacher on some level one-on-one -on -one. you know uh, i mean how many of us could just drink a cup of coffee with someone and tell them how we got saved Amen. elementary principle Right? How we accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior. Amen. So all of these things that he lists here, these gifts, are available for believers. But if you'll notice, sometimes some believers will have specialties in some of these. Yeah. I mean, this seems like they are so graced for this. You know? And uh, um, um, it, it, let's see here. Um, one who leads with diligence. You know, some people, it seems like, wow, they have a real gifting for leadership. You know, uh, um, someone that shows mercy. It just seems like, yeah, everybody shows mercy, but it seems like, man, the way they show mercy just makes you want to shake your head and shed a tear and say, thank you, Jesus, the way they're doing it, you know? There's like a little extra grace for that. Does that make sense? Okay, and I used an illustration last week, I won't use that one again, but I used the illustration of uh, when I transitioned from associate pastor to pastor. And something was different, something needed to change, and I couldn't put my finger on it. And then how that after we became pastor, we also had to be slash youth pastors, you know, in just a few months after being senior pastors for the first time. Then we're also youth pastors for the first time. And we said this over and over again. We never said, well, let me tell you, we never said first, this is hard. We never said this is hard. We never said we can't do this. But we said over and over again, there's a grace for this. Amen. And we kept confessing there's a grace for it. And, and, you know, not many of you here saw us during that time. But we fell into a grace for it. I mean, we said it, we believed it, and we slipped right into it. We functioned and operated under that grace to a point that later on we looked back and said, how in the world did we pull that off? How in the, what did we do? But it worked, amen? Amen. Because there's a grace. Now, that wasn't, now God graced us for a season to be able to do that. And I said this last week while we waited on our David. And you know what that means, right? Because Samuel went out to anoint a king. And uh, Jesse brought all the boys, except David, and he wouldn't anoint any of them. Finally, last one, he brings young David, the ruddy guy, the Bible calls him ruddy, you know. Uh, do you like to be characterized as that? It's kind of, I'm ruddy. But anyways, 
So some, some people, you know, changed it up and started naming their kids Rudy, but it was really Ruddy, all right? <laughs> so, you know, but hey, that was the one. We waited for our David, and then the grace left us to do that. Now sometimes, even in the body of Christ, you'll see sometimes associate pastors think that the associate pastor position is a stepping stone. Oh man, that's a calling. It's a calling. That's right. That's right. And sometimes an associate pastor will become a senior pastor and they're really still to stay an associate pastor. Amen. They, they were called the Ministry of Helps to help that senior pastor. They weren't called to move on in. You know what I mean? Amen. A lot of times people will be called to children's ministry and they'll think, okay, I've done that for a while, now I'm going to be youth. Okay, I've done that for a while, now I'm ready for young adults. <laughs> no, no, that's not how it works. It, it, it's a calling. You know, I, I knew, uh, you know, I was a member of a pretty big church there in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and uh, um, was an usher there, had the privilege of being an usher there for four years. And uh, there's one man in particular, and he's a very famous usher. <coughs> but this very famous usher has never been, and the ushers are divided for a big congregation. I mean, you have, you have sectors, and, you know, we're talking lots of chairs, lots of seating, so you have sectors, and then you have sections, okay? And so there's sectors and sections. Over each sector is a captain. And then in that sector is several ushers that are in charge of different sections. I'm boring you. I'm trying not to, but I'm just trying to explain how big it is and how you have to divide it, okay? This guy is just an usher in a section, and he's been an usher at the, at the door since the church building was in two other buildings since 1985 when it became a church he's been an usher they tried to pull him up into captain and he said that's not what i'm called to do he would not captain he would not captain but everyone knows his name and if you get near his door i assure you i assure you you will know him because he will shake your arm off of its hinge <laughs> And he will say, I appreciate you, at least once. And, and uh, it's, he's, he's, he's uh, okay, so he doesn't say, I appreciate you. But he says, appreciate you, appreciate you. And he will appreciate you. I guarantee you he'll appreciate you. And that's, that's what he's been. But I'm telling you, people that are on TV every day and, and all of this kind of stuff, and they've been on uh, um, all the Christian broadcasting networks at some point in time, They've had Harold shake their hand. And they'd know Harold by name. If they walk in, they'll say, Hi, Harold. I appreciate you. <laughs> that, that, he, he knew where he belonged. That, 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 he was graced to do that. He still is. Still is. I mean, to me, that's, that's, that's some awesome things, you know? Yeah. I had my brother tell me this one time. My brother is a. Uh, He's in the Navy, so, you know, they have their ranks all messed up. But uh, um, <laughs> he's, he's what a captain would be in, in normal military, so I think that's lieutenant in the, in the Navy. And uh, so he's a lieutenant in the Navy, and he told me this. He said, uh, he said, you know, there are days where I wish that I could, that somebody, somebody would pay me $100,000 a year to be a custodian. And I would put an earpiece in each ear, and I would just clean all night, not a care in the world. <laughs> you know, hey, there's some people graced for that, isn't there? Amen. Oh, my God. You go over, I, I don't know if Joe's still at Lakeview, but you go over Lakeview, and then Joe has every key that's ever existed for every <laughs> building. And Joe can let you in, and everybody knows Joe. And he's been there forever, forever. He's, he's an icon over there. You know, people get in an area and, and they just shine in that area. You know, and they're graced in that area. And and but sometimes in our culture we lose sight of that. We lose sight of people doing what they're good at because people are always trying to get ahead. Does that make sense? Yes. But people should be where they're graced. Now, that doesn't mean you can't do something else. Okay? That doesn't mean you can't do something else. You know, you, you can't say, well, God, God has graced me to be a greeter. 
at TFC. I'm a greeter at TFC. So I'm going to walk right past that, that, that beer can that somebody threw in on Saturday night right in the parking of church parking lot because God didn't raise me to pick up the beer can. I'm raised to be a greeter. <laughs> but see, but that means doing. You know what I mean? You know, if somebody go to the restroom and, and there's a plunger right there and it's stopped up. Go ahead and pray about it and then grab that plunger. <laughs> hey man, let me show you the motion. <laughs> and he had this experience going through Jerusalem that people were doing that. And putting palm branches out and saying, Hosanna to the king. Blessed. And he went and had Passover. And after, after they had eaten, he grabbed an apron, tucked it in his waist belt, and went around with some water and started washing the disciples' feet. And you know, I'm going to be real honest with you. <laughs> Unless God tells me to, I don't do feet. <laughs> no. I don't massage my wife's, I don't massage mine, I don't do feet. <laughs> I think, I think, uh, I don't know. Some of you ladies, y'all do a terrific job and you spend a lot of money making yours look good. But I look at mine, I look at every other man's and I'm like, yeah. <laughs> that is not the most precious part of the human anatomy, the feet. Okay, but at least we got shoes. At least we got socks. These characters were walking around in sandals. Huh? And, and it wasn't paved. They're walking around in sandals and dirt. You know what I mean? I can't even go to the rodeo without, I can't walk without kicking up dirt. I don't know what's wrong with me. But I wear boots to the rodeo and I got dirt on my shoes, I got dirt on my pants, I got dirt everywhere. They were walking in sandals and dirt. Plus, plus, their vehicles, the vehicles that they were using, let me put it in PC terms, were creating a really big carbon <laughs> footprint. <laughs> the methane emission from these vehicles was strong. <laughs> and they were stepping in it. You get the picture? Amen. And here's the Son of God. He's emptied himself of all deity and power. And he kneels down and he scrubs everything off everyone's foot. If you are a rich person, if you are Herod, call Herod, he was the puppet king of Caesar, Herod. And uh, he was a great builder. I mean, you go over to Israel, you'll see a lot of stuff Herod built. He was a great builder, but he was a puppet king. But if you're in Herod's palace or somebody that just had a, a vineyard, Somebody's just well off. Whatever the case, the, the foot washer was the lowest servant. The lowest servant in that place was the one that got to wash the feet. And so there's Jesus. He wasn't called to wash feet. That wasn't his calling. His calling was to go to the cross. But what was needed? They needed clean feet. You know? And, and so even though... We, uh, we want to stay in our calling. We want to stay with the grace God's giving us. But there's a grace to humble yourself and do what needs to be done. Right. Amen. Amen. And I, I found that so to be true. I found that so to be true in my own life. That, you know, uh, I was in construction once. And uh, um, it wasn't your typical construction. I was um, a, a cutter. And I don't know if you know what a cutter is, but welders have cutters. And so I was, I was a cutter for a welder. And we built boat docks. And uh, uh, metal, front out boat docks, we had put the, put the pipe, pound it down so many feet um, into Lake Nazareth. Sometimes it would go so far, we would weld another pipe. We were using oil pipe. And we had, we had weld another pipe on top and sink it too because 
I think part of Nazareth that goes to China. I'm not sure. China. I like saying that like that. China. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> you give me all that, I'll, I'll start cracking up. But, I, uh, but, you know, that's the only kind of construction I've been in. We didn't do wood except we did the decking on top. But I found here at the church that something won't need doing. And, and uh, um, man, I just set out for it and get some advice for it and get some help with it. And there's a grace for it. Mm -hmm. I might not even have a clue what I'm doing, but there's a grace for it just because it needs to be done. Yes, right? amen. Yeah. Yeah. See, whatever the situation. <clears throat> now, why do I say that? I say that because I want to go back now to your calling. I've already cleared up there's a grace for whatever needs to be done, but I want to go back to your call. Don't get out of your call. There's pastors that have become evangelists. They've become traveling ministers. They were not supposed to do that. They stepped out of their office and they stepped out of their calling. There's evangelists that have become pastors and they weren't supposed to do that. A lot of them did it because of, yeah. Uh, some did it because of lack of faith, because they, in their mind, the pastorship had a guaranteed check and being on the road, especially during the pandemic, did not. You know? <clears throat> Stay in your calling. Yes. Stay in your calling. Don't, don't be too quick to get out of it. Don't, don't be too quick to change jobs. Don't be too quick for that. Man, God, you know, sometimes it looks like, man, this is crazy, and I'm the only one here that's a Christian. I'm the only one here with a good attitude. And if that's where God put you and you'll be a blessing there, that whole place will change. I mean, you watch it, it'll change. But but when you sow seed, you also gotta water that seed. And you gotta be patient with it. You gotta be patient with that seed. You know, you know, farmers don't throw seed in the ground, dump a bucket on it, and then go, grow! <laughs> it's not working, I give up. No, they got some patience, right? Right. Amen. Praise the Lord. So there's 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 grace. There's grace. Jesus washed feet. It wasn't his calling, but it needed to be done. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Let's look at 1 Corinthians 3. 1 Can you take one more story along these lines? Sure. You know, when uh, most of you know my testimony, and I grew up preacher's kid and uh, was disillusioned by the things in the ministry and all the saints that acted like ants and, and all the sheep that were biting each other and the shepherd. <laughs> and at some point in time, I said, uh-uh. I mean, when I was three years old, I used to go out on the sidewalk and preach to people right outside the church, you know. And uh, they said, what are you... What are you going to be when you grow up, preacher? You know, I'm going to be a preacher. And I have my old New Testament. And I would tell them some things. I was a preacher. Yeah, and, but I got to a certain age. And I saw all that other. And I was like, no. No, I don't think so. <laughs> and, you know, my grandfather was a pastor of a small Pentecostal church. And, uh, you know, it's only in recent years that spirit-filled folk have gotten on the good, the right side of the tracks. In some cases, that's the problem. But it's only certain years the spirit-filled people have gotten on the run. What do you mean by that? Well, you used to, the small Pentecostal churches, they had a belief system. The belief system was, Lord, you keep them humble, we'll keep them poor. That was a belief system. They put the pastor up in an outhouse and, and uh, 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 called it the parsonage. And so this was the mentality. I saw that and I said, oh, no. No, uh, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not going to grow up and have my electricity turned off. I'm not going to grow up and wonder if we're going to eat. That ain't happening. And, and so uh, um, the deceitfulness of riches yes. took over with both mine and Charity's life because she also, uh, she came out of a single parent home and uh, they were uh, very impoverished at different times if not for her grandparents. We were too if not for my grandparents. And uh, um, so we were determined not to. So the seedfulness of riches, we, we serve the God of money and went after it. Went after it hard, dirty. My goodness, that woman would work 100 hours a week. I'm not, I'm not exaggerating. 
Not exactly. She went one time, I think it was 60 something days without a day off. 60 something days. You know, it's since closed now, but uh, when that uh, Walmart on the Supercenter on Sherwood Way opened, it's the first Supercenter here in town. And uh, um, when it opened, I believe that was in 1995, either 94 or 95. When it opened, McDonald's was having a lot of trouble uh, putting McDonald's inside Walmarts uh, because it was just very different than having a standalone restaurant. And uh, they, were have, they weren't making a profit, like at all. You know, some of them were giving up on it and some were, you know, trying to sell pretzels or hot dogs or, you know, something else because it just, um, hers was the first uh, McDonald's and a Walmart to turn a profit. And uh, a lot of that is because she was there day and night <laughs> making sure uh, that if she didn't have to pay labor, she didn't pay labor. But uh, a lot of things suffered, including our marriage. Including our marriage suffered because of that. But we were workaholics. And, and so, uh, you know my testimony. I took off uh, seven years for bad behavior and uh, um, then came back to the Lord. Well, after I'd come back to the Lord, we were, we were at what we used to call our little retreat. Her grandparents had a place on Lake Brown Road. And I mean, we'd go there, and that's only 90 miles away. And so we'd go there, and I'll tell you, even after I became pastor, we'd go there. One time on a Wednesday night, you know, we didn't have any kids. It was a Wednesday night. I sat over here. It was during the song service, and I whispered over, and I said, after church, let's go to Brownwood. And it's just like, all right. And so, uh, you know, we got there, our grandparents over were crazy. We got there at 11 o'clock at night and stayed till Saturday. You know, we'd just take off and go. We called it our retreat. They lived on the lake. They had a couple of boats and jet ski and all kinds of fun toys, you know. And uh, anyways, but uh, we were there and I'd already dedicated my life to the Lord. And we were in, they had kind of a loft type thing where all, you know, visitors slept and what have you and charity had gone down because they had made some kind of brunch or something and she went down to see about it. And I was up there laying in bed and uh, I was wide awake and I closed my eyes and when I closed my eyes, I saw myself do a puppet show and I saw the entire skit. I know that sounds crazy, but entire skit, the entire puppet show I saw. Well, before I took seven years off for bad behavior, I'd been a children's minister. I've been a children's minister from the time I was 14 to the time I was 18 in three different churches. And, uh, um, and that's just what the calling of God was on me. And so I did this puppet show, didn't think a lot of it. But uh, um, anyways, that was in 98. Two years later in 2000, I went to, I went to Carol Simmons and I said, uh, you know, uh, I believe we're going to be going to Bible school. But in the meantime, we just want to work. We just want to do whatever you need us to do. And uh, uh, so what do you need? You know, do you need us, you need me to come cut the grass or pick up dry cleaning or whatever you need. We just, we just want to work. We just want to work for the Lord. And uh, uh, we just want to do whatever y'all need to do. And uh, she said, uh, well, I've got a job for you. You know how Carol talks, you know. And uh, she said, well, I've got a job for you. And uh, she said, you need to talk to Sean. And I was like, okay. And so uh, Shauna was in charge of the children's department. So we went and talked to Shauna, and she said, I need y'all to do the three, four, and five-year-olds. Well, I mean, uh, one church I did, children's church, it's, it was from three to 12. That's quite a big age range, but it was. And so I was like, well, okay, I guess I can do three, four, and five-year-olds. At one time, I did three through 12. And so uh, I said, okay, well, we'll do it. Well, we started doing it one Saturday night that, 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 uh, um, what I had seen came to mind, and I said, oh, well, tomorrow we'll do that very puppet show. And we did that very one that God had given me. <coughs> well, I don't know how it was with you, but with me, uh, maybe you never strayed or wandered off. And that's a testimony all in itself. It really is. But um, I did, unfortunately, and wasted time. But when I came back to the Lord, yes. God seemed to put me in exactly the same spot as when I'd left him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. And there was a grace for him. Oh, there was a grace for him. Oh, there was a grace for him. I was working two jobs at the time because uh, my plans were to go to Raymond. We were believing God for a certain amount. And, uh, you know, I, it's always been my belief system that if the Apostle Paul, who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, could work a second job, then I could too. 
And, and so uh, I, I was uh, working at Lowe's the day, and at that time I was doing census in the evening. And uh, um, so anyways, but I would come up here after I got off from Lowe's, and Kingdom Kids was downstairs, and I would kneel down on that little stage and I would pray. And I would pray for the upcoming service. The Lord would give, a, give me all kinds of ideas of what we were going to do that next Sunday and plans and, and things for the kids. You say, why do you say all that? Because that, there's grace for it. There's grace for it. Everything in the body of Christ is so important. Amen. There's, there's no small job. You know, uh, um, the, the, the people who clean the restaurant, Oh my goodness, that's so important. Mm -hmm. the, 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 uh, the lady who vacuums, so important. Every job, the audiovisual, the sound, camera operation, do you realize that, that Maddie uh, operating this camera lets in people that, that would ordinarily not be able to be here? Every job is so important. And there's a grace for it. There's a grace for it. I tell this story often to, uh, I don't know how come we're along these lines, but we won't get to 1 Corinthians 3. <laughs> you know, we just, follow, we just follow the Holy Ghost, try to keep Amen. up, you know. Amen. You know, Jesus taught by precept and example. You know, if you sat down at a, at a regular teaching of Jesus, number one, you better have slept good the day before because... Uh, if Jesus taught less than eight hours, it was a short day. Okay? <laughs> it just was. <laughs> that's, why he, that's why he had to produce food at the meetings. You know what I mean? <laughs> uh, but he told a parable after parable, parable after parable, parable after parable. Hallelujah. You get, up, you get hooked up with the Holy Ghost and, and you'll do that. I'm telling some of you, some of you are even called to be in front of uh, groups of people. And so I'm telling you that right now, so you know that. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's important, isn't it? Yeah. I tell uh, people in our prayer group this, but uh, and some of you maybe you've heard this, of the story of of, uh, uh, of the uh, person. I don't remember if it was a man or a lady, but it was a person who was vacuuming the church on Saturday night. And they were vacuuming the church, and they were vacuuming the back of the church. <coughs> Someone came in on them while they were vacuuming and kind of looked over while they were vacuuming and kind of startled them, you know. I don't know about you, but when, uh, when if I have a vacuum, boy, I'm singing. You know, I've got to be louder than the vacuum. I'm either singing or preaching most of the time anyway, so I'm doing something. So I don't know what this person was doing, but startled them seeing this man came in. He's out on the back row. They were vacuuming the auditorium. Just watch this person and this person begin to cry. And this person cried there on the back row with their head tucked down. And you know, you don't you, right, you don't want to stare at somebody that's crying, right? Especially if you're doing an ugly cry, you're just not like <laughs> <laughs> You know, you're like you're like pretending like you can't see them. You know, you're going the other way around. Right? <laughs> don't be embarrassed, I can't see you crying. Don't be embarrassed. So you know it's they looked away. Because they looked back and the person was gone. They said, well, I guess, I guess he got up and left. That was on a Saturday night. On Sunday morning, this church vacuumer was, uh, no, let me, let me back up a little bit if I can. When this vacuumer saw that person crying in the back, the vacuumer began to, to pray. He would pray in the spirit and felt intercession come on them as they prayed, interceding for this person they didn't know. Anyways, the person was gone. The vacuumer came in on Sunday morning, still kind of just barely, you know, the burdens lifted, but still remembering, interceding for this person that came in Saturday night. They're sitting and it's about midway through the service, and the vacuumer sees that person that had come in the night before come into the auditorium and sit in that spot that they had sat in the night before. And so again, kind of a burden to pray came on them, and they, and they kind of under their breath were praying in the Holy Ghost for, for that man. 
that man began to cry as the sermon went on. And then there was an altar call. That man's tears were falling off his face and he got up from his chair and went to the front and got saved that Sunday morning. Later on, after that man had joined the church and been there for a while, that man and this person, this vacuumer, had met. And this vacuumer remarked about how he had come in on that Saturday night before the Sunday morning and how that this vacuumer started praying for him then. The man said, I've never come into church on a Saturday night. That Sunday morning I woke up and knew on the inside somehow I've got to get to church today. I haven't been to church in so many years since I was a kid that just something was pushing me. And it just felt like if I didn't go to church, I was going to fall apart. And as I sat in church, I began to weep and I began to cry as I realized as the Spirit of God came all over me that I needed a Savior. He hadn't really come in that Saturday night, but that vacuumer saw a vision of what was going to happen the next day and started interceding for him the night before. Grace. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We are graced to do this job. Hallelujah. We are graced for it. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We'll stand with me. Hallelujah. You know, and that's God's grace because God loved that man. God loved that man. And I think of the grace of God on me. If, if, if my wife and grandmother hadn't been praying, the Spirit of God, they interceded for me. The Spirit of God came in my car. And if my parents hadn't drove me to meetings where the anointing was poured out, I wouldn't have even recognized the Spirit of God. I, I would have thought it was part of the drugs I was taking or part of my drunk or, you know, wouldn't have even recognized it. But because as a kid they put me in front of the anointing and they, and they put me in meetings where the anointing of God was so tangible you could feel like you could touch it. And so I knew it. And when I was in my car, I knew it. And I cried out to God. Hallelujah. That's His grace. That's His grace. That's His love for us. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Glory to God. Well, I know you all are grace to do some things. You're grace to do some things tomorrow. Amen. 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 So when you get to that job, say it. I'm grace for this. Amen. When you get those kids up in the morning and they're fussy and cranky, say I'm grace for this. Amen. All right. Amen. And when you get get your husband up, say I'm grace for this. <laughs> Amen. Praise God. All right. God bless you.